I love a challenge. So can I, Julie from Julie's Felted Friends, for no apparent reason, needle felt a teeny tiny miniature chair that can stand up? As a warning though, this may or may not involve me stabbing myself more than once. And can I needle felt a teeny tiny cat to sit on the chair? There's just one proviso that the cat must be recognisable as a cat. And if I fail to do this, then the Felted Friends can throw me out of the Julie's Felted Friends Club. Um, not sure how that would work. But anyway, let's get started. I decided to make this style of high back chair with wings. So I started by making the cushion with some carded wool. To be honest, I'm not sure why I started with the cushion, but it worked out quite well as this meant that rather than having to make a cushion the right size to fit the chair, I made the chair to fit around the cushion. So then I shaped a square base slightly larger than the cushion. Next came a really tricky bit, felting four teeny tiny chair legs. I rolled up four pieces of brown wool all about the same size and stabbed them into little cylinders. These legs were really fiddly to attach to the base and I had to make sure that they were all the same length and were angled in the right directions, otherwise the chair had no chance of standing up. Then I needle felted the back of the chair shape out of some more carded wool, checking it against the chair base now and then to make sure it's the right size and shape. Next I moved on to making the sides or the wings of the chair. So I used my old faithful technique of getting two pieces of wool that are about the same thickness and length first. This will help make sure that both wings turn out the same size. Then I drew the shape I wanted the wing to be onto the wool, checking the height it needed to be against the back of the chair and stabbing the edges in towards the middle to make the wing narrower and more dense. I also shaped it a bit more by stabbing the undercut to make the wing wider at the top and almost into the shape of a letter P. When I was making the second wing, I compared it with the first to make sure that they were similar in size and shape. Next, I had to figure out how I was going to make the arms. So I decided to have a go at forming an arm into a kind of scroll shape. In the process of making this arm, I somehow managed to stab my finger. <laughs> that one hurt. It's all part of the risk you take when you're needle felting ridiculously small miniature things. If you're enjoying watching me stab myself, amongst other things, then it would mean a lot to me if you'd click the like button. After I'd made this scroll shape, I realised that the arm was going to be far too long. And in fact, I could cut this in half and use each half as one of the arms. So now I had all the parts, I just had to put them together. How hard could it be? To help attach the wing to the back of the chair, I pinned the wing in place while stabbing it through into the back piece. This stopped it moving around while I made sure it was attached securely to the back and base of the chair. It was at this point I realised the wing side panels were a bit long. So after trimming with some scissors, I finished attaching them. Also, I realised the arm was a bit tall, so I trimmed a bit off the bottom and attached the arm right up next to the wing. I'm not sure if it's because of the dark wool that I used, but I'm really pleased that these joints are barely visible. I repeated all this again for the other wing and the arm, and also stabbed myself for the second time in the process. <laughs> this needle felting can be quite painful sometimes, but once they were attached, I was quite pleased with how this miniature chair turned out. But will it stand up? Um, no. This took a bit more fiddling around with the angle of the legs and to get them a similar length. But next, I had the really difficult challenge of making a cat small enough to sit in the chair. I took a tiny piece of merino wool and rolled it up into a small ball and started to stab it into a fairly flat round shape to make the cat's body. Once this was fairly well felted, I got another tiny piece of white and rolled it into a ball between my fingers and stabbed it a bit before attaching it to the body to make the head. At this point it didn't look much like a cat, so I continued to stab it from all angles to try and shape the head some more. Then, to make an ear for the cat, I rolled up a really small amount of white wool and stabbed it onto the mat into a kind of triangle shape. This has got to be the smallest shape I've ever tried to needle felt and was extremely fiddly. I attached it to the top of the head and repeated the process again to make a second ear, shaping them a bit more once attached. It was now actually starting to look a bit like a cat. Next, I took literally a few strands of black merino wool to try and make two minute eyes. These eyes were very tricky. When I tried to attach the black wool for the right eye, it kept sinking into the head, making the right eye look smaller than the left. 
hand. But after fiddling around, it looked okay. I didn't want to stab it too much for fear of losing all the eye. Then I decided it wouldn't be a cat without a tail. But rather than add a tail, I decided to define the shape of the tail by stabbing in a line to give the impression of its tail up against its body. After peeling it off, I neatened it up a bit as it was very fuzzy. Then came the big moment to try it out for size on the chair and ask somebody what animal they thought it was. And to my relief, they said a cat. So yay, I get to stay in the club. And if you'd like to join my slightly balmy felting club, just click the subscribe button. Or you might want to watch this video showing you how to needle felt this super easy Santa. Thanks for watching.